Now, I've already proven that we're spiritually of Israel, right? right. That we're spiritually Jews, according to Romans 2, Philippians 3, and Ephesians 2. That's pretty easy to prove from the Bible. We could turn to many other scriptures. But listen to me, I'm, I'm about to really blow you away tonight. And I don't say that, I don't say that very often. And I'm about to make a really big promise. And I'm going to deliver on that promise. And when I first make this promise, many of you are not going to believe that I'm able to do what I say I'm going to do tonight. I'm going to, I'm going to promise to do something. And many of you are going to not believe that I'm able to fulfill what I'm going to guarantee you. But, but let me tell you something. I will deliver. Okay? And I don't say that lightly. <laughs> just, just, just hear me out. Okay? I've, have I proven that we're spiritually the sons of Abraham? I mean, I've done that in many other sermons. Have I proven that we're of Israel? We've been brought nigh into Israel. We're sons of Israel. Spiritually. Listen to me tonight. You're not going to believe me. But when I'm done, you will see it. I'm going to prove to you tonight that you are a physical descendant of Abraham. I'm going to prove it to you tonight. I'll go a step further. I am going to prove to you tonight that you are physically descended from Israel himself. Not even just of Ishmael or Midian. I'm going to prove to you tonight that you have physically descended from Israel. You say, I'm black. I'll prove it to you. <laughs> you say, I'm Chinese. I'll prove it to you. I'm Korean. I'll prove it to you. I'm white. I'll prove it to you. Now, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. Pastor Anderson's out of his mind. There's no way he can prove that. Look, when I'm done tonight, the only people who will disagree with me are just people who don't understand science and math. No scientist will disagree when I'm done tonight. No mathematician will disagree when I'm done. That you, well, surely you don't mean me. I mean you, are descended physically from Israel, not spiritually, physically. Let me step over to the board here. <laughs> I know it's a tall order. It's a big promise, okay? But let me explain to you. Now, this is something that I actually learned when I traced my family tree. And when I, when I figured out how this worked, this blew my mind. This blew me away. And I learned this about five, six, seven years ago when I was tracing my own ancestry and my family tree. And I want you to pay very close attention because this is going to involve math. And so I want you to pay very careful attention. I'm going to explain this to you and make it as simple as I can. Okay, this is what a family tree looks like. Who's ever made a family tree before? You've got lots of people. Great. Now, at the bottom of this family tree, we just have one person. These circles represent people. So at the bottom of the family tree, we just have one person, which is you. Now, you descend from two people, don't you? Your mother and your father. So if we go back one generation, you come from two people as a direct descendant, right? But if we go back another generation, you don't just have two grandparents, you have four grandparents. And it keeps doubling, doesn't it? Because you have two parents, four grandparents, eight great-grandparents, 16 great-great-grandparents, and you have 32 great-great-great-grandparents. Everybody follow so far? And it keeps doubling because everybody has two parents, okay? So, we're going to use exponents tonight, okay? Exponents will help us understand this because we started with one person, right? That's two to the zeroth power equals one, all right? Then, in the, in the first generation, we go back. We're going back one generation, going back to mom and dad. We have two parents, which is two to the first power. When we go back two generations to our grandparents, we have two squared, or two to the second power, which is four, four grandparents, right? If we go back three generations, we have eight great-grandparents. That's two to the third power. Four generations, it's going to be two to the fourth power, 16. Two to the fifth power, 32. Two to the sixth power, 64. So the number keeps doubling, doesn't it? Now, that means if I were going to do a family tree that went back five generations, I would have to have a piece of paper wide enough to where at the top of that paper I'd be able to have 32 people's names, wouldn't I? Because that's how many 
ancestors I'm going to have directly in that fifth generation. Now if I went to the sixth generation, my paper is going to have to be twice as wide because now I'm going to have 64 slots to put in names, right? Now, our parents are two different people. Our grandparents are four different people. Our great-grandparents are eight different people. Now, how, how could we have, uh, you know, three grandparents? You know, it'd be like a guy with two wives and people are marrying their half-sister. It'd be a mess, okay? So these people are all unique people. You know, if I made a family tree like this, these would all be unique names, all unique people, all different people. You know, not like that song, I'm my own grandpa, you know, about living in the South and so forth. But anyway, so have you ever heard that song? But anyway, so, so anyway, you know, a normal family tree, going back five generations, all the names are pretty likely to be unique. And I, you know, I've done my family tree to this level, and the names are all unique. It's all unique people, because there are a lot of fish in the sea, a lot of people in the world, right? Well, what happens, though, is that as we go back further, this number gets really big. Now, in order to understand how this chart works, we have to understand how long a generation is. Now, a generation has nothing to do with the lifespan. Okay, you know, for example, my mother gave birth to me when she was 30 years old. Okay, most women give birth to children around that age. You know, the childbearing time would be pretty much between 20 and 40 these days. So it would be the primary time that women are giving birth. So let's just take 30 as an average. My mom was 30 when she had me. If you go online and type in how long is a generation, the number that keeps coming up over and over again is 25, 25, 25. You know, sometimes you'll see 30, sometimes you'll see 20, 20 something. But let's just, 30 is a nice round number. And 30 is a very conservative number for this calculation, okay? So a generation is 30 years, meaning, you know, somebody has a child when they're 30, and then they have a child when they're 30, they have a child when they're 30. Nothing to do with lifespan. Okay, so that means that if we go back 10 generations, and a generation is 30 years, then that's 300 years, right? Yep. So let's just round off and say that if we went back in our family tree about 10 generations, we're going to be at about the year 1700. Does that make sense, everybody? About 300 years ago. Now, because our family tree is getting wider, if we wanted to do a complete family tree showing all of our ancestors back to the 10th generation, we would have to have a piece of paper that was wide enough to have 1,024 slots. Because 10 generations ago, there would be 1,024 a, a, a people that we would directly descend from, right? Because it's going 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024 when we get to the 10th generation. Now, here's what I noticed when I did my family tree, though. When I went back 10 generations, you know what I started noticing? These are no longer unique people. Why? Because people marry their... Don't you hate it when you, you accidentally marry your seventh cousin and you didn't even know that she was such a close relative. You know, obviously you don't know. I mean, who here can name their third cousins? Who even knows what a third cousin is, you know? But anyway, uh, basically this is what a cousin is. A cousin is the people that you share your grandparents with. You share the same grandparents, right? A second cousin is somebody that you share great grandparents with, okay? So for example, the children of cousins are second cousins. The children of second cousins are third cousins. The children of third cousins are fourth cousins. Okay, you don't have to understand all that. But what I want you to understand is that by the time I got to the 10th generation here, these 1,024 people were not all unique because there had been some intermarriage in that 300 years that had unknowingly taken place. Let's go back 20 generations. So now we're back around the year 1400. Well, if I wanted to have a complete family tree, I would have to have a piece of paper that could fit 1,048,576 names. That's a pretty big piece of paper. Yep, yep. It's an unbelievably sized piece of paper. Now, do you think all of these people are going to be unique? No. Maybe not, right? Okay. Now, let me just show you the scripture. I'm going to come back to that chart. Just digest that for a minute. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 1. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, it says in verse 4, Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies. I want you to keep that phrase in your mind. Endless genealogies, which minister questions 
rather than godly edifying, which is in faith, so do. Now, in Titus, he just said avoid genealogies. But here he says to avoid uh, endless genealogies. Now, I'm going to show you why genealogies are endless. They truly are endless. So in the year 1400, if I'm going to trace all of my ancestors, I mean, I'm going to tell you who all of my ancestors from the 1400s are, I would have to show you a family tree that just at the top would have a million some people, just in the top row, let alone everything else coming downward, right? If I were to go back 30 generations, now I'm only in the year 1100. I'm not even close to the time of Christ yet, am I? No. If I went back to the year 1100, 30 generations, I would have 1,073,741,824 ancestors in that generation. Now, listen, they're not all unique. And let me tell you why. There were not a billion people living in the world at that time. So there's a lot of repeating going on, right? You know what that shows? That a lot of people are descending from the same people. Right. Cannot help but intermarry. It's impossible not to because of these numbers. Now, but look, the real number that we want to go back to is not 1100 AD. Let's go back to 70 AD because 70 AD is when all the Jews were scattered yeah. into all nations. And they were scattered into all nations, okay? If we were to go back to 70 AD and we were to have a family tree that shows all of our ancestors in 70 AD and how they're connected, that top line would have 18 quintillion, 446 quadrillion, 744 trillion names from 70 AD. Now, who thinks that there were 18 quintillion, 446 quadrillion, 744 trillion people living at the time of Christ or shortly thereafter? No. In fact, the approximate population at that time was 200 million on this earth. Okay? Of that 200 million, let's just call 7 or 8 million Jews. You say, I don't like that number. Well, that number's not going to matter in a minute. Okay? So let's just call it 7, seven 8 million. Okay? So if there are 200 million people on the earth at the, t at the time of the temple being destroyed, in 70 AD there are 200 million people on the earth, and about 7 or 8 million of them are Jews. That means if I have an ancestor from that era, there's a 1 in 27 chance that they were of Israel. That's not even counting all the mixing that could have taken place up to that point. But let's just use this number. Let's just say 1 in 27 people living at that time are descendants of Israel. And uh, let's say that, you know, 200 million is the population of the earth. So basically, each of my ancestors has a 1 in 27 chance of being of Israel. Does everybody understand? Okay. How many, how many slots am I filling in on that family tree? 18 quintillion slots, right? So think about this. What if I were buying a lottery ticket, and the odds of that lottery ticket coming up a winner are 1 in 27? Does everybody understand? Because that's the winning ticket that says, you're Jewish! You're of the chosen people. You are of Israel. You are an Israelite indeed. I've got a 1 in 27 chance of pulling that number. Okay. You say, well, Pastor Anderson, if you have a 1 in 27 chance, you're probably not going to win that lottery because you got 26 chances of losing. Okay. But what if I buy 18 quintillion lottery tickets? You got it. You think I'm going to win? So what if I buy 18 quintillion lottery tickets and I got a 1 in 27 chance of striking Jewish? You think I'm going to hit it? Yeah. Now, how many, let me ask this. How many times do I have to hit it to be descended from Abraham? How many times do I have to hit it to be descended from Israel? So how, how can anyone in here say, I'm not descendant from Israel? I'm not Jew. I don't have a drop of Jewish blood in my body. You're saying that you basically, out of all these chances, because and I realize that these are not unique people. Okay, there are not 18 quintillion ancestors, but there you're filling out your family tree. There are 18 spots, 18 quintillion. I can't even say these numbers. 18 quintillion spots for you to write a name. 
of someone in that generation that you d directly descend from and only one of them, only one of them has to be an Israelite. Well, there weren't seven or eight million. Okay, let's just, let's just say one million, right? Let me grab my pen here. Well, there were, you know, seven or eight million. Okay, how about just one? How about a one in 200 chance? You got a one in 200 chance of, of your ancestor from that generation being an Israelite and you're buying this many tickets. Think you're going to hit it? Yep. You say, well, Pastor Anderson, you're not taking geography into account. I mean, if you're in the Middle East, you're much more likely to hit it than if you're in Korea or China or Africa or, you know, I mean, what are the chances that you're going to hit it then? <clears throat> but wait a minute. You only have to hit it once. You only have to have one ancestor out of all these ants. Only one has to be of Israel. Now you say, well, I'm, I'm Hispanic. Okay, first of all, people that are Hispanic, notice Spanic, Spain. Did you know that Spain was one of the places where the Jews lived the most? There was a huge Jewish population in Spain until 1492 because in 1492 all of the Jews were forced to either be uh, in 1492 all of the Jews had to either leave Spain or convert to Catholicism or die those are their choices well guess what a lot of them did left Spain. a lot of them left Spain but you know what a lot of them did convert to Catholicism that's why today a huge portion of the Spanish population is directly descended from those Jews because a lot of them were the conversos you know they converted unto Catholicism and then you know what those people in Spain and Portugal who were Jews who converted to Catholicism you know what their descendants did they came to Mexico they came to South America they came to Brazil so people all over Mexico Brazil South America they are for certain going to have ancestors from Spain and Portugal somewhere in their big giant family tree of millions of ancestors and for sure there's going to be at least one of them that's a Jew at least one out of millions of ancestors out of a quintillion chances 18 18 quintillion mind you that's going to be you say well you know I'm black I'm of Africa. You know, how can I be connected with Abraham? Well, stop and think about it. Israel, and we're not even talking about Abraham. We're, I, I'm even saying you're of Israel. Okay. Think about Israel's children. You know what? One of Israel's children, Joseph, guess where his wife was from? Egypt. Joseph's wife was of Egypt. Where's Egypt? Africa. Moses' wife was Ethiopian. His second wife was Ethiopian. So we already see, even in Bible days, intermingling with Africa, intermingling with the sons of Ham. I mean, if you think about it, the tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh were half of Ham and half of, of Israel because Israel's son, Joseph, married an Egyptian woman who's of Ham. So all of the Ephraimites and Manassites are descended of Ham. They are all have connections with Africa. And not only that, but all throughout history, you've had all kinds of merchants and missionaries and conquerors. Even, you know, you think of the Mongolian Empire that went all over the world and that conquered China, that conquered Japan, that conquered Korea. All the ships that sailed and went here and there and everywhere. You only have to have one ancestor. Out of your millions and millions of ancestors, you only have to have one that descends from Israel. And you are a direct descendant of Israel today. Only one is what's necessary. Now, anybody who understands what I explained just now, anybody who knows math, you know, we've got an, a, a certified accountant. Do you approve this message? We have a certified accountant in the front row here that just told me that he approves what I'm saying. Because any mathematician knows that this is true. And you know what? Any scientist will tell you this is true. We talked to the guy at the DNA lab. He said, you go back several hundred years, we're all the same. Because we're all, you know what? The Bible was right when it said we're all of one blood. Yeah. That God has made the nations of the earth of one blood. You sit there and say, oh, I'm just purely a white person. 
Oh, I'm just purely Asian. I'm just purely African. No, you're not. No one is. No one is. That's why it's so ridiculous to take pride in that. Oh, well, I'm Jewish. You're a Gentile. Those Palestinians over there all descend from Abraham. Every single one of them. Well, no, you mean most. All of them. Every single Palestinian is a descendant of Jacob. Anybody who disputes that statement after seeing this information just doesn't understand math and doesn't understand science. And the guy from the DNA lab will tell you there's been so much mingling. And look, you, you can sit there and have your endless genealogy. It won't even be accurate. Because you know what you can't tell from a genealogy? Somebody who committed adultery and lied to their husband and said, oh yeah, this is your son. And he's not. People that are adopted and not told that they're adopted, or even they're told they're adopted and they just that just information gets lost. I mean, who can tell you all the people in your in your lineage that were adopted? Oh yeah, my ancestors 300 years ago were adopted. You're not going to remember that. So there are adoptions. There's infidelity. There's traveling. There's conquest. There's merchants. There's there are missionaries. It doesn't matter where you're from, folks. God, you know why God said to avoid this? Because it hurts your mind to even think about this number. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, it, it, I mean, these numbers bend the mind. He's just like, just avoid it. <laughs> you know, he just avoid endless. You know, you know what they minister? Questions. I mean, does does this make you feel really sure about your nationality now? No, it, it raises a lot of questions. Because now you're thinking, good night, who do I, you know, what, am I descended from, you know, Iroquois, Gypsy, African, Chinese, Korean, Caucasians? You know, well, you know, we're all mixed. There is no pure, you know, the Nazis, you know, the pure Aryan baloney. There's no such thing. Because one little drop of, 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 of Jewish blood. And I asked. I asked the guy, I asked the leader of the Jewish congregation, I said to him, how Jewish is Jewish? I said, how many Jewish ancestors do I have? I said, I did my family tree and I said 10 generations back, so at this level, because I, I, I really did, I found someone with a Jewish name. And he said, well, as long as it's the matrilineal line, because they do it on the mother's side for some bizarre reason, as long as it's matrilineal, he said, then you're Jewish then we're all Jewish. But do you see now why Israel doesn't let you use DNA to return to the land? I want to return. I want to return to my homeland and my ancestors. Let me return to Israel. I'm an Israelite. Prove it. 